the university and I needed a job. And um, I worked in the day camp. It was abysmal. You know, it was like kids and runny noses and <laughs> sick every day because you're, you're not used to being around kids. And all the teachers were just like, <laughs> all right, little Tommy, he's got getting fresh. <laughs> and I was just like, this, I can't, oh my god, I love kids, but this is crazy. So I used to sneak kids away because the teacher was so lazy. So I'd sneak them away, sneak them away, and create programs with them because I was learning guitar, you know. I, I played the little acoustic guitar, you know, like hippie dad with friends and stuff. And, um, and I'm like, I want to continue playing guitar. I need to nurture myself in this abysmal situation. So I would gather kids and I'd make up stories with my guitar and they would like move around. <laughs> and I realized quickly that this is what they love to do because kids want to role play. They want to like, you know, try, you know, like, you know, with your kid, if you're on the phone, then he's like, I want to be on the phone. Hello, I'm my mom, you know, whatever. You know, <laughs> when you're a kid, you know, you want to, that's how you learn, you like model, you know, whatever the behavior is, you know, and, and check it out. And so um, I, I developed this program where I was teaching kids and, you know, um, so I'm going to go on for a little bit, if you don't mind. Just give me a little background about everything. And um, the teacher was like, what are you doing? You're putting these kids under some weird spell. Like, all of a sudden they're listening and they're sitting down because they want to do this. And, you know, and I tried to make it based on just uh, learning. So I would sing certain songs and then they would know what they would have to do in the song and then they would have a chance to do something themselves, you know, and, and at one point I would just be like playing whatever on the guitar and maybe moving around and that's, you know, an awesome state to be in for kids because they really feel like they're in control but it's not an out of control situation where they're pulling your hair and going, I don't like you, I don't know about it, you know, so, <laughs> so um, they realized that I could teach these kids this and, and um, I started to teach teachers how to do how to be creative with their kids, which was really funny because I don't have a teacher's education. And, I'm not, like, <laughs> and I'd be going to these teacher conferences, you know, and I'd be getting, you know, paid like, wow, you know, two hundred dollars to like teach teachers. And I was like, that is that's cool. That's more than I'm making a week at the daycare, you know, stuff like that. And then I started to develop my own program where I would. Um, teach kids drama or music or whatever age they were from six months up to, you know, um, third grade and I started to teach in, in private schools and I did that for around ten years and um, developed a program there, had my own boss, nothing, you know, I always thought I was going to be fired because I looked like crap or whatever. <laughs> Nobody cared because the kids loved it because they really felt like, they couldn't tell, like I said, if I was a boy or girl, an adult or a kid. They were so very confused about <laughs> what, what, where do I fit into their, you know. But the parents would tell me they'd go home and, and they'd be setting up their dolls or doing, you know, trying to do the programs. And, and I've met kids since that time, you know, where they said like, you know, you played guitar and you were a girl and you gave us all a pick one day and I still have that pick and everybody in that class plays guitar now or, you know, um, it's, it was it was a really good experience. I mean, it was a lot of work, but. Um, and at the same time, at night, I would develop music. So now I'm coming back to your <laughs> original question, which is where I had an acoustic guitar. And I had a girlfriend, and we weren't getting along anymore. But we um, we were both learning guitar. You know, it sounds like the Indigo Girls or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was around that time too, where you're like the Indigo Girls. Wow, <laughs> Melissa Etheridge, gay. Casey <laughs> Chapman's gay, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so my friend was a comedian. She was getting, uh, and there was this place back from Toronto, and there was this place called the Cabana Room, and a lot of um, folk or folk rock musicians would play there before they got really famous, like the Bare Naked Ladies. I don't know if you know them, but they they played there every Wednesday, or you know these other bands like the Sky Diggers or other bands that just are in Canada. And um, one Wednesday night, my friend who's a comedian, she asked us to open the show, me and my girlfriend, and we never really played together, and I had a few songs she did, and they were both mostly songs about how we're not getting along, you know, to, to further <laughs> the sort of <laughs> murmurs and whatever else it is. So um, we played together, and it went really well, and we ended up playing every Wednesday in this, you know, having this um, venue, and we're like, mm, how are we going to do this? So we would practice every week, and start to develop and, and that's how I became a musician, kind of like, oh wow, I guess I'm a musician, I'm playing folk music with my ex-girlfriend and I want to do other stuff. So, I mean, after I realized 
you know, wow, maybe that's a better way in than, than theater because you can be your own director and your own writer and your own, you know, and then you can start to develop. So um, I started to do more up on jazz, which I called it because I worked with this um, musician, John Zosky. He was very um, jazzy and I don't know. I just knew this one who played drums for dancers and stuff like that. So, so I started to write with them and, and um, it wasn't really very, uh, I wouldn't say successful with audiences, but it was very successful for me in my development. You know, I always get that, you're very Elaine Lovitch or Nina Hagen, which means like, we don't know who you are. <laughs> you're different in, in, in like, you know, like that, and it's not really working. You're either, you know, Kate Bush or Nina Hagen, who are amazing, but you're not that, you know. So um, it was good development, and then um, I met. Uh, a band uh, called Spin the Susan, and they saw my picture in the local paper and they thought I looked weird, so they were like, hey, we we'll do a gig together. <laughs> and I met this girl, and, and I really, and it was the first time I, I wasn't really part of a music scene, you know, it's all really late actually. I'm like 26 already, or 27, I don't know. We were 26 when I met those guys. Um, and uh, they had a band and girls, and I was like, hey, let's start a girl band, you know, girl, girl rock, you know, <laughs> getting into the. 90s and you know, <laughs> Sun Youth and yeah, grew up. Um, and she's like, Well, I have two friends, and they're not girls, but the one's my neighbor and one's another guy. Why don't we just jam together? And then we jammed together, and it was awesome. Uh, I'd never met these two other guys one was uh, Gonzalez, one was Maki, and um, the girl's name was Sticky. She, she stayed in Canada, and we just started to jam, and there was all this like sexual tension. and awesome musical tension and um, they're really, you know, proficient. Uh, Maki's like an upright, you know, jazz bass and Gonzales like can play modern classical piano, but we were all just smoking pot and we like, yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. And, um, you know, they, they uh, I remember Gonzales said, wow, you play guitar like Joey Santiago who's from the Pixies. And I was like, oh my God, I got a guitar compliment. Like, <laughs> And then we all started switching around instruments and just singing crap about each other. It was really fun, and I'm like, this is this is it. This is what I want to do. And then I remember the day we all sat together. Maybe it was even like in a, I don't know Dunkin' Donuts or something. We we're like, let's give ourselves names and like, you know, I was like, I want to be Peaches because uh, Nina Simone uh, sings a song really about four women and they're struggling. And in the end, she says uh, about the fourth woman, they call me Peaches. And I, I wanted her to sing that to me, so I'm like, I'm going to be Peaches. <laughs> Little did I know, Peaches, what a can of worms, like, <laughs> what you see on the outside, your Peaches, your Peach, your, you know, like, porno names. I didn't think about that at all. I was thinking about Nina, Nina Simone. <laughs> it was just really funny because, you know, all that. And then, you know, friends moved away and everybody started to... Um, do their own thing. I got a little jam space. I started to jam with a lot of other people. Um, I started to get into Super 8 film, you know, this is like before everybody had home computers. And um, I started to make my own uh, music. And uh, I had an ADA machine. I don't even know if you know what that is. It's like, <laughs> it's before computers where you have to act, you know, it's digital, but you have to record everything like, okay, go, you know, like that. Kind of thing. Five. And I, I got this machine because people were moving away, and I'm like, I still want to make music. So I got this machine called the MC505, which I saw in like a music shop, and you could make drum drum patterns, and you could make, you know, synthesized sounds, or then crappy guitar sounds, which I really liked because it used to be like, eh, 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 eh. you know, it was like the dance of my first album. But um, <laughs> you know, so it's cool, and I I, I was really it, it was also a good time. I was going through like you know a breakup and stuff like that. So I just like sit in, in my headphones all day and, and do stuff and uh, Peaches got developed that way and, and I came to Berlin and um, I had that machine and, and Gonzales and I decided to just like jam in Sydney. So we didn't know we you know, no laptops, we didn't have Ableton stuff. So he had like these two turntables and I had um, a five five and we were just play music, plug in anywhere, like can we plug into your bar in Amsterdam where everybody's drinking, you know, hash milkshakes anyway, and they don't make okay, and then uh, we didn't sing or anything, we were just doing whatever, and we came to Berlin and we played at a place called the uh, Gallery Berlin uh, Tokyo, which was like a really awesome already scene, which I've never seen this kind of, you know, Berlin in 1998, we were just like, wow, what's, what's going on here, you know. 
people are up all night and doing whatever they want. You just you it, it uh, rubs off on you where you're like, yeah, and I can do whatever I want. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and we played, and actually a small label came up to us and said, would you like to play a festival of ours? And we're like, oh, okay, you know. And it was in uh, uh, folks uh, the uh, folk theater. Folks, you know, you know, um, and you just look at that and you're like, oh, I want to play there, amazing, like, mm -hmm. so I couldn't go, I had to continue my job and, and um, made me a little angry that I couldn't do exactly what I wanted to do then, so, which probably gave me the attention and I, I ended up making the Peaches album, and so I started that in Toronto and, yeah, just developed from there. I think I probably answered many questions that you can <laughs>